The final item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 13551 in the name of Stuart McMillan on Texas Instruments. And the debate will be concluded without any questions being put. May I ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons and I call on Stuart McMillan to open the debate. Thank you very much, President Officer. President Officer, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, every member who has signed the motion to allow this debate to take place. And I'd also like to thank my Whips team for allocating me the time. I want to begin with a short history of where we are regarding the Texas Instruments situation before exploring other aspects surrounding the business and also Inverclyde. In January 27, 2016, uh, TI announced that they were to close the Greenwood plant with a loss of over 300 jobs. This came as a blow to my area. One that really hasn't been without its economic challenges over many, many years, since the decline of the majority of the shipyards, the heavy engineering, sugar, and also in recent times, the huge reduction in the IT sector. The local site manufactures semiconductors, but they also had a design centre. The 25 posts in the design centre were made redundant in April and May 2016. Also, the population of Inverclyde are robust, and we've had to be, as the TI announced it, followed a trend of other industries in the past. The vast majority of these TI jobs are technical, highly skilled, and the financial contribution to the local economy is vast. These workers deliver results, and the Greenwich facility is productive. Now, TI took the decision uh, purely for business reasons. Now, the Greenwich site is one of the smallest in its portfolio. They therefore uh, wished to consolidate their business by closing the Greenwich site and transferring the work to the USA, Japan, and also to Germany. Now, TI is the second biggest manufacturer of semiconductors in the world. So they actually have that scale and the size to make this type of decision. I'm grateful, however, that TI provided a, a long lead-in time before the closure takes place. Now, TI extended the closure date to 2019, which has provided additional viable time to try to find a buyer. Now, the Texas Instruments Task Force was established by Inverclyde Council and it consists of councillors, parliamentarians, Scottish Government Ministers, uh, Scottish Office Representatives, Public Agency Representatives and also the Site Director of Texas Instruments. It is a genuine Team Inverclyde approach. The primary goal of the TI Task Force was, and still is, to find a buyer to maintain the site. And if that proved unachievable, then the task force would focus its efforts on providing the best possible outcomes for the workforce and also the local community. Government agency staff have visited the plant to talk to the workforce to make them aware of the services available to them. And I would like to thank TI for their cooperation in this regard. Now, TI contracted ATREG to help sell the site. And despite some companies coming forward, they unfortunately amounted to nothing. Earlier this year, the joint statement by uh, Inverclyde Council Leader Stephen McCabe and also Paul Wheelhouse MSP, the then Minister for Business, indicated the past efforts and dialogue with potential buyers and that one was still on the table. We have been informed that discussions are continuing, which I am sure everyone with a stake in the outcome for the workforce and also the local economy welcomes. I believe that the TI Task Force has provided a, a forum to discuss the challenges and any possible obstacles facing a successful outcome for the plant and also the excellent workforce. Now, President Officer, I want to put on record two things. Firstly, uh, my thanks to everyone uh, on the task force for the collegiate manner in which everyone has worked. Secondly, but most importantly to the workforce, with the threat of redundancy hanging over their heads, they continue to perform, to deliver and to contribute to the highest possible standards. They are the consummate professionals and when TI do leave the area, their loss will be the gain of someone else, now, whether it's in this industry or in some other industry. Now, this summary, I hope, helps Parliament appreciate the efforts that actually have been underway, but also the efforts that continue. Now, as I said at the beginning, the 300 plus workforce and what they contribute to my area is hugely important. They have transferable skills, and if that became a necessity, but maintaining their quality of life by living and working in Inverclyde it's important for them, but also for our area. Now, I am in absolutely no doubt that anything and everything that can be done is being done, and I do not doubt that for one minute. My message to Texas Instruments, to any potential buyer, to the Scottish Government, its agencies, and also to Inverclyde Council is very simple. Don't leave any stone unturned to get a deal. 
the TI, you will be able to leave the area knowing that a positive legacy is the outcome. TI will be aware that there hasn't always been in that case locally, so they can show that they actually are trying to be responsible. Any potential buyer will be getting a first class, dedicated and highly motivated workforce. The fact that workforce have done this daily for years, and this has continued after the closure announcement, proves that they are a credit. And if they can still deliver under the stresses that they are feeling, just think of what they can actually do with job security. The Scottish Government will have an area that isn't been hit with a major economic shock, and income tax receipts will continue as compared to nothing. And Inverclyde Council won't have to worry about an increased number of people leaving the area, adding to the historical population decline and thus the economic aftershock this will bring. It's in everyone's interest that a deal is done. Now, presenting officer, some of the challenges we face include a population decline and also the claimant count. Our population is down to just under 80,000, when once we had over 110,000. The recent National Records of Scotland population figures and projections highlight this stark message. Between 1997 and 2017, Inverclyde's population has decreased by 8.9 per cent, while Scotland's population increased by 6.7 per cent. And during that period, the 25 to 34 age group has decreased by 28.6 per cent, and the 75 plus age group has increased by 20.9 per cent. And between 2016 to, 26, to 2026, it's projected that Inverclyde's population will decrease by 3.8 per cent, while Scotland's population will increase by 3.2 per cent. And between 2016 and 2026, the 16 to 24 age group will decrease by 13.2%, but the 75 plus group will increase by 20.8%. Our claimant count uh, rate based on the recent ONS figures stands at 5.4%. That's 2,670 people listed. That's in September 2018. And with most of the heavy industries gone, we have our challenges. However, there are many positives too. Shipbuilding remains in Port Glasgow with Ferguson Marine, thanks to the support of this Scottish Government, an action I am immensely proud of. We also have ship repair in Greenock at Dales Marine Services. We are the home of the National Ferry Company with Calmac and Gurok. We are the recreational marine capital of Scotland, with an increase in level of marine-based activities, including over 60 cruise ships docking in Greenock this year, and that number expected to increase hugely next year. And the new George Wiley Museum will be incorporated into the new docking area for cruise ships, uh, that will be part of the opening of one of the City Deal projects. Presenting officer, these are just some of the many wonderful aspects and examples as to why Inverclyde should be a destination of choice and a location for investment. Inverclyde is my home. I grew up there. I live there. And I am immensely proud of my area. We, just like every other part of Scotland or elsewhere globally, have our challenges, but we also have our opportunities. We are no different from anywhere else. Now, I don't want the workforce of TI to be added to the claimant count figures. I want them to continue producing the high quality, high value products that they are doing. And doing that enhances my community, Inverclyde's economy, and also Inverclyde's reputation. The TI workforce have consistently delivered. They have perseverance and hope. And I hope, and I genuinely hope, that we can give them the best Christmas present that they could ever wish for. And that's a deal to secure their jobs for the long term. Thank you. We move on to the open debate with speeches of around four minutes, please. Jamie Green, followed by Neil Bibby. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, first of all, can I open by thanking uh, Stuart McMillan for his uh, impassioned speech and for using parliamentary time to bring this very important issue to the Chamber. It's, uh, it's an excellent uh, use of the limited time that Parliament has to discuss this very issue. Um, it's such an important matter because, as uh, Mr McMillan said, it greatly affects not just those who work on site, but their families and the wider economy. Um, I, uh, like, uh, like Stuart McMillan, grew up in, in Greenock and, and uh, I'm fully aware of the, the changes that the town has gone through in terms of some of the big employers who have come and gone over the years uh, and the effect that that has on the town. Uh, is substantial and this is uh, uh, another one of these cases sadly. Uh, what, since the task force was set up in 2016 I mean really the, the concept was to bring together the council, the government and some of the government agencies such as uh, Scottish Enterprise but also uh, the uh, site uh, itself 
uh, as well as local uh, politicians, to get round the table and, and, and have some frank and honest discussions about the situation there. There have been many meetings of the task force. I've tried to attend as, as many as I can, uh, with the exception of a few uh, diary clashes. And I've always found those meetings to be very uh, constructive and, and very open. Uh, and I would actually like to pay tribute to the uh, uh, Texas Instrument Task Force uh, Chair, uh, Councillor Stephen McCabe, for the work and effort he's put into this. And I think that acceptance that unless we were collegiate and sat around the table and worked together uh, uh, as politicians and, and uh, as agencies, they really the, the task force would never achieve anything. I can say honestly the task force has worked tirelessly to look at and explore all avenues right up until this point. And actually, to be fair to the government, uh, have done the same. Uh, their agencies have participated in these meetings and they have sought to go out to the wider market, both in Scotland and overseas, to see what buyers might be out there. There have been so many instances in these meetings of expressions of interest. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong, some of these uh, companies may have been tire kicking, looking for, for an opportunity for a site. And many have come and gone. And it's been disappointing uh, that we've got to the stage uh, where we're at at the moment. As I said, Greenock uh, and Inverclyde in general has been a, a, a resilient and robust part of Scotland. Uh, if we look at some of the companies that have come and gone to a great extent, like IBM and National Semiconductors, your members of my family worked for, for decades, uh, right up until the retirement in these iconic industries. Uh, and when they closed their doors, it really left a, a legacy uh, on, on the town, and this will be, no, uh, this will be uh, another one of those. And I, I share Mr. McMillan's um, uh, values in this. We don't want these people to be simply more statistics uh, or simply to be joining uh, the queue of, of, of benefits claimants. I think, you know, we need to look at what next. I think really there are only uh, a few potential options. I think this is really last chance saloon, as we call it, uh, to find a buyer. And as the motion says, we really should redouble all efforts to do so. I think for those who do want to use this opportunity to retire, they should be uh, helped to do so and, and, uh, and not judged for doing that. Uh, many people have their reasons for that uh, and I understand those. But there are many, and there are many, who wish to continue in employment. And, th and that really sort of brings me on to a, another issue, and that's that about what we do around re retraining and re-employability. Uh, just last Friday, I went to West College Scotland in Paisley. They have a campus in Greenock. It used to be the old James Watt College. Uh, many people will know it. And one of the conversations I had with the new principal there, who's just recently taken up office, was that issue around how we can use further education facilities such as at uh, West College Scotland to help with adult retraining and re-employability. I mean, it really is an issue when people find themselves made redundant at a certain time of life, uh, but too early to retire and still want to continue in the workplace, but are struggling to adapt after decades in one environment to the new digital industries that, that seem to be uh, coming forward. Um, so really, we, we have to have a, a conversation about how we help uh, many of these people retrain uh, practically uh, and academically uh, to get some of these new uh, new um, opportunities. And I know PACE is working uh, with uh, many people on site and we will continue to do so. So I only hope that that will uh, continue. Uh, starting off, sir, in the short time we, we have here in closing, uh, I think it's a great site. I, it's, I've really struggled to understand why no buyer has been forthcoming. I do hope that there is still an opportunity out there. But if there isn't, then those people who do want to continue in the workplace must be given all the support that every government and every agency can provide them. As, as Stuart McMillan said, uh, it's a great place to, to, to live and to work. Uh, and, and I hope that if this plant closes, we at least can see these people uh, move forward in their careers and move into the next stage of their careers. And I hope all politicians, uh, both at local level and uh, in this uh, chamber, will do everything they can to assist them. Thank you. Neil Bibby, followed by Maurice Corey. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome tonight, tonight's debate brought forward by Stuart McMillan. Uh, I support the motion we debate tonight on Texas Instruments because it must be a priority for all of us to protect and create quality jobs in our communities. And I would agree with Stuart McMillan on the importance of this plant to the Greenock community and to Inverclyde as a whole. It would be difficult uh, to overstate its importance. In an age in which global competition has seen reliable uh, productive, high-value industrial jobs move elsewhere. This plant has continued to give skilled workers in Inverclyde the opportunity to, to sustain a valuable and profitable trade. 
Just as hundreds of people benefit from this highly skilled industrial work directly, still hundreds more enjoyed indirect employment supported by the presence of Texas Instruments. Thousands benefit from the injection of millions of pounds into the Inverclyde and West Scotland economy. In total, as has been estimated, the loss of this factory would mean a loss of 572 direct and indirect jobs and 32.2 million pounds in GVA. As others have said, we cannot allow Texas Instruments to withdraw from Inverclyde without a viable alternative coming forward. I also uh, join other members in commending the work of the Texas Instruments Task Force that has worked hard to find such an alternative. By working together to find a way forward, the Council-led task force with other agencies and the business community in the west of Scotland have exemplified how the public and private sectors can cooperate to promote economic interests of a community. I would like to uh, commend everyone involved, particularly Councillor Stephen McCabe and his council uh, officers for the leadership they have shown, uh, but also the workforce for the commitment and resilience they have shown in the face of adversity. The truth, presiding officer, is that the story of this factory is not just another story of the stark realities of global competition. The potential loss of these highly skilled jo uh, jobs is not a sign of the times, nor a result of modernity. The truth is that the plant was a profitable and continues to be. In the 2017-2018 fiscal year, it generated profits of upwards of £3 million. The sharp decline in Silicon Glen and the erosion of our electronics industry over the years has been dramatic, but that doesn't mean we don't have options now. We don't just have to accept the loss of what remains of our electronics industry in Inverclyde, and I would agree with what Stuart McMillan has said about everything that can be done should continue to be done to protect uh, this important asset. Members of the task force and I have said for the past two and a half years, a buyer can be found and a buyer must be found. The plant still can have a long-term future, and I hope this can be confirmed in the near future. In pursuing a viable buyer for the plant who can continue to support these jobs, the industry and electronic innovation in the future, we commit ourselves again to building the robust economy that we can achieve and which our people deserve. The last of the open debate contributions is from Maurice Corey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I too express my thanks to Stuart McMillan for bringing this important motion to the Chamber and I support the motion accordingly before us this afternoon. Uh, I welcome this opportunity to speak about Texas Instruments. Semiconductor plants such as this are an important part of Scottish industry, and so it is up, this upcoming scheduled closure is of a great concerning situation. It has the potential not just to affect Greenock and the Inverclyde area, but the worth of Scotland's nationwide industry. And I also echo the points of my colleague Jamie Green, which was said already earlier this evening. I hope that through this debate, we can raise awareness of the issue and strengthen our motivation to keep fighting for the work base at Texas Instrument in Greenock. And this highly skilled number deserve to have no stone unturned in our aim to ensure that they have continued employment. Also three years ago, it was announced that the uh, Greenock Texas Instruments plant, the semiconductor factory, would be scheduled to close in 2019, has been referred to earlier. We cannot be mistaken, the loss of this plant will be a severe blow both to the Inverclyde economy and community, and its workers are an asset to the industry. The potential loss of Texas Instruments will have a worrying impact. First and foremost, its closure will affect 550 positions 318 direct jobs are expected to be lost. What does this mean for the area? Without the jobs, families in the area might feel they must move elsewhere in search of more concrete employment. This will alter the face of the community and reduce options for incoming businesses and industries to, in, uh, to Inverclyde. The closure of Texas Institute may also result in the loss of healthy competition across the industries in Scotland and the potential financial loss is high. Our economy could lose over 32 million pounds. To be clear, this is not just a local problem. Texas Instrument has been, a, been of enormous financial benefit to Scotland's economy. To keep this going, we must safeguard it. And I'm thankful for the work put in by the Texas Instruments Task Force, which I'm pleased to be associated with, too. This group exists, exists as an ongoing collaboration between Inver, Inver Clyde Council, the UK government, and the Scottish government, as well as councillors, parliamentarians, and multi-public agencies. 
Our aim since the announcement of closure has been to protect the employees and to ensure a long-lasting and secure future for the future in Greenock, for the future of the plant in Greenock. This has been, as, ex as expected, a challenge. For such a niche and specialist industry, finding a buyer for this plant has proved very difficult. Uh, our efforts have so far not, uh, not uh, been received, had not received the answer we would hoped for, but with each new possible opportunity, the task force remains hopeful of success, even with ongoing tentative negotiations, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed on this. I hope the efforts made by the task force will continue to be supported from all corners, and only with full support can all avenues be explored in depth. I know the task force is committed to protecting the skills base we have on our doorstep and utilizing it as much as possible. Ensuring long-term stability will open doors to the next generation of the community, and for this reason, it is essential that we continue to include the semiconductor science as part of our high school curriculum. This will encourage young people to direct their sights and their skills towards the future of the industry, and I hope that our teenagers will have the opportunity to put their skill set, this skill set they gain for practical use in real-life situations, and I hope that the Greenock plant is here to provide it. In conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, I echo the call to continue agency-wide cooperation in our efforts to protect Greenock work, the Greenock workforce and also support the government's efforts. We need to assess our options and every possible solution to keep the momentum going. And this semiconductor plant is part of the global industry of much value to the surrounding community as well as our economy. And in recognition of this, we must further our efforts and enthusiasm for securing its future, both for the sake of employment and also the community. Thank you. I now call Jamie Hepburn to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you very much, President Officer, and can I join with others in uh, thanking Stuart McMillan for uh, having lodged his motion before Parliament for securing this uh, debate uh, this evening. As uh, Jamie Green uh, mentioned, uh, he, uh, Stuart McMillan spoke with uh, a passion that uh, is uh, something he always, I believe, expresses uh, when talking about his uh, home area, and that's particularly uh, in the case of his efforts uh, around the Texas Instruments a task force. Can I also welcome the contributions that others have made uh, this evening? Uh, we often have uh, debates, particularly in members' business debates, where we, we speak with one, one voice uh, with great consensus, and that, of course, is quite correctly uh, the case tonight. We are, are all of uh, the same mind. We are all uh, here because we want to secure a positive outcome for the future of the Texas, Texas Instruments uh, site, but above all for uh, the workforce uh, there. Uh, the points that have been made have been well made. Stuart McMillan uh, reminded us of some of the history of uh, his uh, hometown, his home area, which in line with most of the west of Scotland <coughs> has uh, sadly been won over the past few decades of some industrial decline. He spoke, of course, of the shipbuilding heritage of his uh, area, uh, the sugar industry that was once the hallmark of Greenock. And, of course, in the later uh, wave of uh, industries, we saw... Greenock and Inverclyde established itself as a hub for uh, the IT and technology sector, which of course has seen somewhat of a decline, with text instruments now probably being the last remaining big uh, employer of uh, that sector. And clearly we want to do everything we can uh, to retain that expertise uh, locally. We are of course though moving uh, nearer towards the plant's proposed uh, closure uh, in June of next year. So in that sense, it's absolutely correct that we have uh, this debate the, this evening. Um, the loss of, of over uh, 300 uh, jobs uh, at uh, that uh, site would, of course, be an enormous blow to the economy. Texas Instruments has added a, a significant uh, contribution to Inverclyde's local uh, labour market, local economy, by providing a large number of high-value jobs. There are there's no area in Scotland that could afford to, to lose uh, that number of jobs, but I'm acutely aware of the wider socio-economic context that uh, Inverclyde operates under and its issues of depopulation that Stuart McMillan uh, very ably uh, set out. So it is it's something that we need to uh, be focused on. Uh, Scottish Enterprise has uh, pr produced a report which assessed the economic impact of the company's closure. And in that regard, Neil Bibby was quite correct to say this isn't just about the jobs at that site alone. If you include those supported by the site's uh, supply chain uh, and the uh, in, included impact of uh, falling household expenditures, uh, the uh, assessment that Scottish Enterprise took forward 
say, suggest that there could actually be 570 jobs lost to uh, the local uh, economy. So, uh, in that sense, uh, the scale of the issue goes far beyond the business uh, itself. Now, Stuart McMillan did set out that it was welcome, as it uh, undoubtedly was, that Texas Instruments did give us some lead-in at uh, time to their announcement. That has allowed us uh, time to seek a long-term future for the site and for the workforce and since taking up uh, my role as Minister for Business uh, I have been able to attend both meetings of the Texas Instruments Task Force that have uh, been convened in that time. Paul Wheelhouse of course uh, attended uh, in the past when he occupied the post of Business Minister, President Officer. Uh, as has been set out the task force was uh, a creation of uh, Inverclyde Council uh, but it's been a good approach because uh, yes Inverclyde Council established the task force and convened it but the Scottish Government have been uh, critical uh, participants. Uh, Skills Development Scotland are at the table. Scottish Enterprise are at the table. Critically and crucially, Texas Instruments are at the table because they are best placed to tell us what is precisely happening at the site at that time. MSPs of various political colours are at the table. Since I've been uh, a uh, uh, the Minister for Business, Stuart McMillan has been present. Maurice Corey was at one of the meetings and councillors of different parties are there. And in that sense, we are having that open, frank and necessary dialogue that was uh, spoken of. Uh, we, as a government, have uh, a strong commitment to work with uh, that task force uh, with efforts to secure that long-term future uh, for the plant and uh, its workers. That is uh, an ambition that I think we all uh, share. Uh, we are pursuing the matter out with the confines of the Texas Instruments Task Force uh, itself uh, in February this year, uh, the then Cabinet Secretary for uh, the Economy, Keith Brown, met with the Senior Vice President of Texas Instruments to discuss the situation. We've made contact with the company's Chief Executive to uh, request a further meeting. We've continued to engage with the Managing Director of the Greenwich Plant. Officials, Scottish Government officials, are now focusing efforts uh, in conjunction with the Council's officers through a working group which uh, has started meeting earlier this year. We maintain that open uh, dialogue with Inverclyde Council to consider uh, interventions to support the wider region that we can take together and Scottish Development International have been working actively and with the utmost determination to find a buyer for the plant which is at the, the nub of the issue. As others have set out it has been very clear uh, from the outset finding a, a buyer for the site has been a significant challenge. Uh, Stuart McMillan set out several expressions of interest have unfortunately not come to fruition but I can say uh, discussions are ongoing uh, still between Texas Instruments and a potential buyer. In that regard, President Officer, I do believe it's important that we have to give them uh, the time and space uh, and of course some confidentiality to find an agreement but that being said I uh, have uh, been absolutely clear that the Scottish Government remains utterly committed to doing everything we can to support the purchase to secure a long-term future uh, for the plant. Of course, yeah. Jamie Green. Right, I do thank the Minister for taking my intervention and uh, uh, to thank him for all these warm words this evening. Uh, I think perhaps, though, and he may have picked this up from being at the meetings, is one of the senses of frustration that the task force has had is that uh, when other uh, parts of the country have seen such high profile potential losses in the, in the number of hundreds, as, as he mentioned, that they, these have seemed to have garnered much more focus from the media and a more of a national conversation. This one uh, largely seems to have gone under the radar and I hope that that doesn't affect the way that the government uh, will uh, you know, seek to tackle this or, or to help the community. Jamie Hepburn. I mean, put, to put it simply, uh, President Officer, to assure Mr Green and all other members, no, it, it won't. Um, just as um, Mr Green may be frustrated on occasion, just as I'm frustrated, I can't control what the media uh, output uh, is. But uh, notwithstanding uh, the validity of the point he makes, it will not impact on this government's determination to find and secure a future for, uh, the, uh, for the site and for the workforce. And in that regard, let me say, the engagement right now is more than a, a tire kicking uh, exercise. Let me um, conclude uh, by saying I do think this debate is important because it does take head on that very issue about giving uh, the matter a degree of prominence. It's right that we 
uh, debate this as a parliament. It does reiterate the scale of concern, not only for the, the plant and its workforce, but more broadly across uh, the region. We are doing all we can to secure a viable future for the plant. We will continue to work in partnership uh, to seek and obtain a solution which is in the best, uh, best interest of uh, the employees of Texas Instruments for Inverclyde and for the Scottish economy. And let me assure Stuart McMillan and other members in that regard, we will leave no stone unturned. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed.